Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and welcome back to the channel as well. Today we are going to be doing the FAQ accordion challenge from Frontend Mentor. And to begin, you can just navigate into frontendmentor.io forward slash challenges. And then you can click on this card. And I already have the starter files downloaded just to skip this part. But you can go ahead and click on the download button to get the starter files. And once you download them, you can just go ahead and extract them into whatever folder that you set your downloads to. So mine is in my downloads folder. And then the extracted folder is called FAQ Accordion Main. So when you go into this folder, we get the assets, the design, and then we get a bunch of other files. And we're going to take a look at these files in a moment. But what I've done so far is I've created a new React application using NPX Create React App at latest FM Accordion. That is the name of my application. And then once it finished, then I've just opened up an instance of Visual Studio Code into that folder that is called FM Accordion. And that instance is right here. And I'm running my server already on localhost 3000 so that I can able to preview this right here. So this is the default React application. Well, hello there. Before you continue, then please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video as well because it really motivates me to continue doing such kinds of videos. So to begin, what I'm going to do is I have my downloaded files on the left and then I'm going to navigate into my YT videos and into my application, my React application, which is this one right here. And then what I want to do is I just want to go ahead and grab the assets, the design file, you know what? Let me just grab all of this. Let me just um, accept the git ignore, accept the git ignore. So just drag and drop them here and then replace this or replace or oh, replace. And then for the git ignore, what we're going to do is this. I'm going to open this up and then I'm just going to copy these files, just copy them and then close this down and then close this down. And then I'm going to go inside my Visual Studio code and then inside this git ignore, which is right here, I'm going to paste this on the bottom. And then I'm going to change this to line 29 and line 30. And then I'm going to change this to line 36. And then save that. And then we can officially begin. But before we do that, let me just confirm what we need. The fonts that we need, it's called Waxons. And we need the 400, 600, and 700. So let me go ahead and just open this link so that we can get our font. So Waxons, we need the 400. Oops. We need the 400. We need the 600 and we need the 700. 700 bold. And then we can remove the Roboto font. We are not using this. And then let's just use the import tab and then copy this and then paste it inside our CSS. So source folder index.css. We can remove all this and then just paste it on top. And then let's use our universal selector and say that the font family for everything, font family is going to be, what's it called, Waxons. And then a fallback of sans serif in case this fails to load. And then let's just save that. And then now let's do a bit of cleanup so I'm going to delete the app CSS. I'm going to delete the app test JS and the logo report with vitals and the setup tests. So just delete them. And then inside our index CSS, we're going to remove this part because we've deleted this file and then we're going to remove this as well and then save it. And then in our app JS, I want to remove everything inside here and I'm going to say export default function app. And then I'm just going to return an H1 that says hello world. Save it, and then if you take a look at our application in our browser, we should see hello world. So that is looking nice. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is just place this to the right, and then place this to the left, and then inside our design files, you know what, I should open this up. So design files, let's check the mobile design first. And so this is the mobile design. So we have, I guess this is an image on top. This should be an image on top and then just the questions. So that's looking easy enough. We can close this. What we're going to do though is this. Oops. Uh, let's just leave that. 
what we're going to do first is I'm going to create a new file and my computer just hung. This is what I have to deal with. Uh, yeah. Okay, there we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a questions.js which is going to have the questions and answers that we're going to need for our FAQ. And then I'm going to say this, I'm going to say export const questions. And then this is going to be an array of objects. So it's going to have a, a key of question and then the question and then answer and then the answer. And then now for this, what we're going to do is we're going to need to just do a bit of typing. So what is front end mentor and how will it help me? So what is front end mentor and how will it help me? And then the answer is front end mentor offers da da da. And you know what? Let me just, uh, I'm just going to skip to the end of this because I don't want this entire part to be in the video because it's a bit boring because it's just typing. So let me set this here and then let's just type it, but I'm going to cut it out anyway. Okay, so I'm done typing this out and I just realized that I think these are the questions that they have on their website. I think they are. But anyway, so let's begin building this out. So inside our app.js, we are not going to return on each one. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and import the questions data. So questions from questions and we, it is a named export. So we need to import it inside curly brackets as a named import. And then we need the use state hook. So import use state and use state is going to help us just to initialize this for our state value. So I'm going to say const and I'm going to say, let me just say, I could have called it questions, but it's going to conflict with this. So let me say items and set items. And then this is equal to use state. And by default, I wanted to take in the questions array of objects that we wrote down in the previous step and then inside our return we're going to say this return a section and then this section is going to have an image on the top that we are going to get in a few moments i think it's an image i didn't even confirm so assets and then images yeah should be this one so what we're going to do is just drag and drop this images folder inside our source folder so drag and drop and then this we can delete the fonts folder we don't really need it we're not using it anywhere so just delete the fonts folder and you know what? we can delete the assets since it doesn't have anything inside anymore so for the images we have the background pattern we have the plus icon the minus icon and the star icon so that's okay that's okay so what we're going to do now is this we're going to say that um what are, what was i doing was I doing? I was I was getting the background pattern. Okay, background pattern desktop.svg. So we're going to say this. We're going to say that import pg mobile from dot slash oh sorry dot slash images for slash background pattern mobile.svg and then just copy this down and then change this to desktop. So desktop and then change this to bg desktop as well. And then instead of just rendering the image tag, let's use the picture tag so that we can toggle between these two depending on the size of our screen. And this takes in a source tag. So this takes in a media attribute. And we're going to say that for a mean width of, let me say 640 pixels, then we want the source set. Remember to change this to capital because we're in JavaScript. We want the source of this image to be BG desktop. And then, um, hmm. is that correct? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. And then the default image that we want to show is the mobile image. So BG mobile. And then let's just save that. Let's see whether it actually works. So we have the mobile image here. And then on large screens, we have the larger image. So, so that's working correctly. And then now what we need to do is this. Below this image, we need to go ahead and create our FAQs container. 
and I think if I look at this closely I think the background is a bit gray so what we're going to do is this we're going to go inside the body inside our CSS and say that for the body we want the background color to be hashtag f1 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 which is just slightly gray so that we can make our questions container to be white so below the picture tag sorry we're going to go ahead and create a div and then this div is going to be our questions so i'm going to say this we're going to say questions or rather items dot map and you know what i just realized i just realized that perhaps we don't even need this because we are already getting the questions from our questions data array so we can just say questions.map because it is already an array of objects so questions.map and then for every question that we get back i also want to get back the index which is going to be used as our unique key and then i'm going to say for each question then return an article so we're going to return an article with a key of index and then below this article we're going to return an h2 that says the question the question dot question and question dot question because we are going inside inside each object so each object that we return here is called question and then the question has a key of question so that's why you're saying question dot question and then below this we're going to have a paragraph that says question dot answer now when i save this it seems as though everything is working correctly but we don't have the click for this so we don't have the click event for, for when we can toggle this but we're going to fix that in a few now the next thing that we need to do is you know what let's just go ahead and fix the click for this and for that we're going to need to import the use state because we need to toggle our state so i'm going to say is open for the question and set is open and this is equal to use state by default it's going to be false and not i probably should have said is showing because i think it's better in terms of showing our questions so set is showing and then let's import this on top so just say control spacebar and then enter and it's going to automatically import it for you but i'm going to put it on top because it is a high level react import compared to these other ones and then now what we're going to say is this we want that when you click on the question or on the article meaning when i click anywhere inside the article because the article contains the question as well as the answer i want to toggle this so the way we do that is let me just go inside the question uh sorry inside the article and say on click then i'm going to go ahead and pass in my inline function and say set is showing to the opposite of is showing meaning set if is showing is false then set it to true and if it is true then set it to false and then what I want to do is I want to toggle the paragraph here and say that only when is showing is true, that's when I want to render my paragraph. Now, if I go ahead and save that, and I do apologize if you're hearing some noise from outside, there's just some kids playing. So when I save this, you'll notice that all our answers disappear. But if I click on one question, then all questions appear. Okay. and if i click on it again then they all disappear so in order to fix that then we need to go ahead and render a question a question component for each of these so for example if i cut this out and say instead return a question component that we're going to create in a moment and we're going to create it right now anyway so if i say function function question and then I say he insert here, then return the article that I just copied and, and pasted it. You will notice that we get uh, a few errors here that says this question is not defined, right? It's not defined inside this component. What you need to do is we need to go ahead and pass in this question inside our question component as a prop. So I'm going to say that the question prop is going to be equal to the question component. And you know what? I can now remove the index here. And then we're going to add a key on the question component which is going to be equal to the index so that now we can remove this from here and then once we do that because now we are passing in the question prop which is equal to the question object that we get back when we map over all our questions then we can go ahead and destructure it inside here and say that for each question then now you can see that we no longer have any of those errors 
So if I go ahead and save this, then you'll notice that now it says set is showing. Oh, sorry. We need to go ahead and pass in is showing and set is showing so that we can actually use them here. So I'm going to say, uh, you know what? Let me say is showing. So is showing state value. Uh, so is showing prop is equal to the is showing state value and set is showing prop is equal to the set is showing function. Now let's save that. And then let's destructure them inside here. So is showing and set is showing and then save that. And then now set uh, just reloaded because we already fixed it. So reload our application and you'll notice that now we have this and I can click on this and and I can click on this and hmm, it's still not working. It's still not working. And you know what? I know the reason why it's not working. I know the reason. The reason is because our, we need our state values to be inside the question component instead of inside the parent. So what we're going to do is just cut this out from here. So cut it out and then paste it below this. And then we can remove these two props and then we can remove this as well. And then now let's see. Let's save it. Let's save it. Let's try it again. And there we go. There we go. There we go. That's looking nice, nice, nice. Now, something else that you can do is instead of having question equals to question, then you can just use the spread operator and just by adding your brackets and saying dot 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 question, meaning passing all the remaining properties inside the question into the question component. So if you had a bunch more items inside here, then it would be much more beneficial to use this because it passes in all the remaining properties. And then you can just destruct it and then do that. So save that. So either this or the other method is correct. But then do take note that if you use this method, then you need to go ahead and destructure the question as well as the answer because this passes in the individual properties okay so that now you can go ahead and say question and save it and it's going to show the question and then here you say answer and it's going to show the answer when you click on it because we're already showing the click event so do take note of that now our functionality is mostly working what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and i want to refactor this code a bit because it's not recommended to have multiple components inside another component so what I'm going to do is this, I'm just going to cut this out and then I'm going to create a new file inside my source folder. So a new file called question.js and then paste this inside here and then inside our app.js, I'm going to cut this out and paste it inside our question because we need it for our state values and then save that. And then this is going to say export default function because it, it is now in its individual folder or other file. And then I'm going to say import question from question so that our component doesn't break. And then when I save that, then it should work correctly. There we go. So now what we need to do is this. We need to go ahead and show our images. So basically all the our icons, let me say icons. And we don't have this title, by the way, just notice. So we need to go ahead and show our, our icons here on the question. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to cut this out, place it inside the div. And then inside here, I'm going to go ahead and add in a button and the button is going to be an image and the image is called icon plus. So icon plus and icon minus are the images. And I don't know whether you can hear the noise outside, but it is a bit annoying for me. So let's go ahead and import our images. So I'm going to say import plus from dot slash images forward slash icon plus copy this down change this to icon minus and then change this to minus for the name of our icon and then what we're going to do is inside here and then inside here we need to create a toggle for whether is showing is true or whether it is false so when is showing is true we want to show the minus icon and then when is showing is false we want to show the plus icon so what we're going to do is this i'm going to cut this out and say when is showing is true then we want to render an image here really image 
and the source for this image is going to be the minus icon and the alt attribute can remain to be empty because this icon is decorative and then when it is false then we want to render another image here Oops, sorry this should be outside of the the closing image uh angle bracket when it is false we want to show another image here really and the source for this image is going to be the plus icon and the alt attribute can be empty as well so now let's go ahead and save this and there we go so we have our plus icon and when i click on this then it shows our minus icon so our functionality is now working correctly so that is looking quite nice all you need to do now is just tell this out so that it looks a bit better and we need to add in our title i just remember that because we, we haven't added in this faqs title so what we're going to do is above or rather below this picture we're going to have an h1 this h1 is going to be an image that comes from the star image and then we're just going to say faqs and then let's import that image so let me just copy this down change this to star and then change this to icon star i think that's it uh, that is, is its name so icon star dot svg there we go and then now we can begin to style this out so let me give this a class name of questions dash container container and then let's see for the question uh yeah i think that is the only class that we're going to need if i'm not wrong so inside our index css let's go ahead and do this let's say that for the picture tag as well as for the image tag we want the max width to be 100 percent so that they fit inside the container in which they are placed let's set the width to 100 percent so they take up the full width there we go and then of course it's going to mess with this but we're going to fix it in a moment and then for the buttons remember remember that these icons are also buttons so what we're going to do is for the buttons we're going to say that we want the background color to be transparent and then we want the border to be none we want the outline to be none so that it now fixes these buttons and then we want the cursor to be a pointer so that when you hover over it then it shows a pointer that is looking nice and then let's reset all of this notice how there's a bit of margin all around so let's go ahead and reset that so let's say reset the margin to zero there we go reset the padding to zero and then we'll set the box sizing to border box so that it uses the css box model meaning place margin on the outside and place padding on the inside of elements and then let's go inside the h1 let's say that for the h1 display this as a flex box so that now the h1 and the image go here and then let's say that for the h1 i want to get the image i want to reduce the width to about 20 pixels to reduce the size of that star let's say about 32 pixels and then back inside here let's set the gap here to about 1 rem maybe that's too much let's say 0 0.5 rem okay and then let's go inside the section did i use a section here yes i used a section oh you know what hmm I should probably add a container here for the h1 as well as the div because notice how the h1 and the div they are inside a white section so we need to do that so i'm going to add in a class here called container and then paste in my h1 and then my questions and then once i have that i can go inside or rather above this and say that for the dot container class i want the padding all around to be 24 pixels I want the border radius to be one rem and then i want the margin margin oh to be minus 50 pixels that it moves upwards let me say minus 100 pixels and then i want the background color to be white so that we now have a white background color uh, is that not working a white background color where is it container hmm. background color white is that not working background color red okay so it's going behind the image it's going behind the image so let's set this to position position relative and then let's add the z index here 
to about 999 any any large number that you want so that it goes above above everything and you know what once you add position relative it should just go above the image yeah it's just go above the image because relative positioning is higher in terms of z index than other elements and then let's set here let's set the margin the margin in line so margin on the left and right to about one rem to push it inwards just a bit there we go and then let's go back to the h1 let's set the font size to 24 pixels let's set the margin bottom margin bottom set it to about one rem or maybe two rem push away from the questions a bit and then set this to two rem because i noticed there was no change in the font size there we go and then let's go inside the questions dash container and then for this one i want to go ahead and i used what inside the question what they use i used an h2 inside the questions so oops inside the questions container i want to go ahead and access the h2 and for this i want to reduce the font size to what does it look like let me see it's pretty small so let me say one rem so one rem and why is none, none of this working question or question or oh, you know what this should be questions with an s there we go one is a, is a bit too small so 1.5 rem 24 pixels that's too big so 1.1 rem 1.25 rem there we go and then for this one i want these icons to come here so i'm going to say display flex display flex i know that's not going to work it's not going to work because inside the question we have the div we have this div and then the h2 is inside here so let me check how is this structured if i were to go i have the questions container and then there's only one div because the question component is this div is sorry is this article and then the div so in order to access that i can say uh, let me remove this from here i can say dot questions container and then the article and then the div and then display flex and it's going to work but that is a bit too too much so it's just easier to add a class here so just add a class and say question and this should be class name because we're in react so let's go back inside here and say that for the questions container container i want to access the question class and say display flex and that works and then i'm going to say align item center and just write content to space between to push them to the end as you can see right there and then this reflects align item center why is this one larger why are you larger let's see i think it's because of the size of the image so let's go ahead and fix that so let's copy this downwards let's say that for all the images to have a width of let me say about 20 pixels why is this one still larger anyway let's add a grid gap here of about one rem or two rem and you know what? that's the wrong place that is the wrong place because i need to add it inside the questions inside the questions container so paste this above and then let's say display flex break everything and then change the flex direction to column there we go and then let's say align items to the flex start also you're not uh that's not what i want i want align XM items to the center this is really annoying let me say this let me do align items and then let's say just by content to space between space between and then let's add a gap here of about two rem separate out the questions there we go there we go so i've noticed that the image is larger when the question doesn't go all the way to this to the end so let me say if i go ahead and disable this okay nothing changes but uh, hmm. the h2 the h2 is inside here and then the button is here and then the image is inside the button so if i go ahead and say that for the question image this this doesn't seem to affect it all that much doesn't seem to if i say important here no that doesn't even make a difference that doesn't make a difference i want to go inside 
what inside this button yes i want to go inside this button and display it as let's go inside the question here and add a great gap of about two rem to just increase this space a bit but this is this is really annoying that is really annoying where's my question it's here display flex align item center hmm. see right here they're all the same they're all the same size but when they come here then this is a bit bigger so let me mess with these questions a bit let me mess with these questions so add in unnecessary long just to see uh, whether it's going to, to do the same thing so now it's even smaller now it's even smaller so you know what i think the way to fix that see they're both now on two lines and that would mean that on larger screens then it's not affected anyway so in order to fix that i think if i were to use flex grow so let's see let's see let's go inside so we want to go inside the question and then inside the image question image here if i were to say flex one that is going to break a bit it's going to break a bit or it doesn't and it doesn't because this should be button this should say button flex one yeah okay we know that that is working we know that that is working and that is really annoying me now so let me just take this back to image and then set the height here to 20 pixels for each of them and let me see let me see is it because of the way i structured this I can't believe I'm, I'm being stuck on, 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 on this of all things. Of all things. Hmm. This should have a box shadow, if I remember correctly. Yes, it does have a box shadow. And these are, oh, it has borders on the bottom. I just noticed that. They have borders on the bottom. So let's go ahead and add in those borders. And then let's pretend that we can't see this. So we, let's go ahead inside the articles. And the articles are structured as follows this should now be inside here and then let's say dot question that's better so let's say that for the questions container questions container i want to get the article and then i'm going to say border dash bottom two pixels solid and hashtag easy 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 which is a very slight gray and we're going to have that and then we're going to say give it a padding of one gram on the top and bottom and zero on the left and right zero on the left and right so we're going to have that but now we have a border on the bottom here which i don't think is inside the design and i just noticed that we don't have any spacing between the heading two and the paragraph let's add a margin bottom here of about one rem to separate this out and then let's go ahead and access the paragraph right here and say this would be paragraph let's change the line height here to 1.8 let's change the color to to what let me say hashtag 11827 1118271827 and then just drag this upwards just a bit if my color picker is going to show just so that it can be a bit just a bit um what's it called you know, this shouldn't be here. I was wondering why the, the, the styles are not applying. It's because the paragraph is not inside the questions class. So yeah, I think I think that's better. I think you can read that easily enough. And then now, I still want to mess around with this. So let me say 40 pixels. Make it a bit bigger because I noticed that it's a bit bigger in the design as well. It's just a bit bigger. And then now, this should be complete for mobile. Now all we need to do is add in our box shadow on the on the questions container let me say box shadow let me say rgba 0, 0, 0 and 0 0.25 and then let's add in our other values so let's say 10 pixels on the horizontal 10 pixels on the vertical and let's say a 10 pixel blur radius and we should have that that looks ugly or not i'm adding it on the on the questions instead of on the actual container so this should be on the container, which is this one right here. There we go. So that now it applies on the container. And then let's add a bit of scroll 
um uh, what's it called just a bit of uh, leeway when we're scrolling so on the body let's add a padding dash bottom of let's say 32 pixels padding bottom there we go so that we can just scroll just a bit now that we have that let's go ahead and scale this upwards because as you can see it looks a bit ugly we just need to limit this out so we're going to say this let me place this full screen we're going to say that at media for a min width of 768 pixels which are tablet size then we want the container to have a max width of 500 pixels let's see how large is that that's a bit too small let's say 700 pixels a bit better and then let's say margin inline in line of auto which is going to push it to the center and we have our faq section that is looking nice now you don't have to do this inside the media query because this tells scale up even if you add in add it in um beforehand so let me just copy this and then comment this out and then let me go inside my container and then add them here and you'll notice that it scales up um, this is not applying because this is here the margin inland is here so that's why it doesn't apply but if i were to disable this and save it you'll notice that it now applies okay so that is just something that you can do and the reason i added margin inland here is just so that we can add a bit of uh like margin on the left and right here so that this doesn't push all the way to the end but that is looking quite nice so we can remove this from here so that doesn't conflict with our classes and we can comment this back or rather uncomment it there we go that is looking nice so let's go ahead and submit this solution let's go to github let me go ahead and open this up shut down our server and then we can close all of this down close them down and shut down our server as well now let's create a new repository and the new repository here i'm going to call it fm accordion dash two because we already have dash one existing or not this should be new repository not search for repository so fm fm dash accordion dash two and then create repository so creating there we go so copy this link and then back inside here let me say git add all and git commit and i'm going to say initial commit because i don't feel like typing all of this out and then i'm going to say git remote add origin and then paste in our link and then git branch dash m main to switch it to the main branch and then git push dash u origin main which is going to push that to our remote repository now once you have that then i can go ahead and reload this and we should be able to see it right there now let's go into netlify so that we can deploy this and then let's copy let's copy this link so that we can go ahead and say where is it visit challenge hub right here and say submit solution and then the repository url is what i've just copied and then i'm going to say mobile first mobile first uh what's it called accordion in react js and let me say mobile first responsive Accordion in react js hashtag my name <laughs> let's log into netlify we can close this so logging in logging in logging in and then let's say add a new site so from an existing project because we're on github so deploy with github and we want to search for fm accordion dash two so let that search and then the site name for this i mean what let me just let me just uh, wait for this to finish so here we go so there let's go ahead and say deploy this and then let's just wait a moment let's change the site name here change site name let me say tsp server let me say fm accordion dash two save it and then obviously it's not yet there because it's still deploying but i can copy that link and paste it here for the live site url and then let's wait for it to finish so that i don't submit this with issues 
so where's the deploy log deploys here site has not yet been deployed so it's still deploying okay it's done it's done so let's go back to site overview let's visit this link to make sure that it's working reload oops um uh, it says published open production deploy okay there we go so why why wasn't it showing my my thingy okay there we go there we go oh i didn't change the title i just noticed that i did not change the title anyway that is something that you can do quite easily so let's go ahead and say this let me say submit solution and then refreshing and in three two one there we go there we go i don't have to share this there we go so that is going to be the end of the project and if i take a look at our solutions you will notice that this is our solution and then this is the design so it's a bit close to it not so close because the h the h1 that we have inside here is a bit smaller than theirs but the functionality works so that is the important part so that was a nice challenge and i'm going to build this out in vanilla js and i'm also going to use tailwind css with react or in next.js i think i'm going to use next.js for the next one just to show you that we can build this out in multiple ways and so that is going to be the end of the video and if you enjoyed it then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel as well if you're not already and i will see you in the next video bye bye